Praise the Lord, everyone. Good morning to you on this Tuesday morning as we come together again for morning prayer and devotion. I pray God's blessings upon each and every one of our prayer warriors today who are so faithful to this ministry. Uh, Kristen reported yesterday um, that the missions team they sent to Africa uh, from Wisconsin um, were returning home and she wanted us to remember them in our prayers for a safe return and she's thanking God for the thousands of lives that were touched by the ministry uh, there. So we thank the Lord for all that he's doing uh, through these various teams that are going overseas and uh, some are not able to do that but we're able to uh, do this and so uh, if, if all of us are faithful to the ministry that God has called us to then together we're going to see a great harvest of souls as a result. In our prayer request this morning, Kristen's dad had a procedure yesterday, so we're praying for swift healing for him. Uh, we need to remember Anthony Sifford in our prayers, specifically this morning for an ENT appointment that he has today, and we're praying for improvement of his vocal cord movement. That is uh, something that we've been believing for together and this is the next uh, important step for him in being able to um, have the feeding tube removed uh, and to be able to progress to a regular diet over time. He has to have this, uh, these vocal cords uh, moving properly. Uh, we're praying for continued recovery, not only for Anthony, but also for several others who have suffered stroke. Buddy Randolph, Billy Huey, Wayne Owens, Tina's mother, Carmen's cousin Kelly, Johnny's nephew Joey, and Sheila Sappington. We also need to pray for Pastor David Kent that he would continue to recover from the paralysis that he suffered after falling on icy pavement this past winter. Uh, we're praying for Dalton and Jewel uh, who have had injuries that they're recovering from. Kathy Hardy broke her hip and is recovering from that. We're praying for Seth to regain the feeling in his finger and for Pastor Chris Dew, uh, who is um, afflicted with Guillain-Barre syndrome. Also, let's pray for people who have had recent surgeries um, and are on the road to recovery from that. Malena's mom, Michelle Strange's sister, uh, Cindy, and Carmen's cousin, Shannon. We need to pray specifically for Malena's mom as she is also dealing with uh, dementia that has worsened uh, post-surgery and we have a few others on our list each and every day who are dealing with dementia as well so let's continue to believe for their healing those who are battling cancer need our constant prayers let's lift them up again today uh, don williams having a basal cell carcinoma removed on the 18th of this month bob stanley with brain cancer amy dees with thyroid cancer cheryl diane escher heather and Dennis are all battling cancer. Melissa Petzold has breast cancer. We're praying for Sherry, who is afflicted with uh, cancer and also lupus. Uh, we're praying for Dwayne Lewis, Claire, Alice, Michelle's sister, Cindy, Tony Nelson, Marcia's friends, grandparents, all uh, dealing with cancer issues. Gladys Sims, recently diagnosed with adenocarcinoma. Sister Cassie Barella's mother, uh, with stage four ovarian cancer, Scott Lucia, Ari Bowers, Donna Hayes, Kristen's friend Betty, Jamie Joe's grandfather with lung cancer, Johnny's cousin Kathy, Christy Smith, and Kristen's aunt Jean, who has non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, my aunt Virginia is going through precautionary radiation treatment. She successfully completed chemotherapy after having breast cancer removed, and she has been declared cancer free. Uh, but this is a precautionary step uh, that they advised her to take and she's been completing these treatments. Also, Darla Crane from right here in Plexico going through precautionary chemo and radiation after having a brain tumor removed. We're praying for Sherry and for Chase with uh, severe liver issues. Many children on our list who need continued prayer today. Bailey May with hearing loss, Abram with GNA01 disorder, Abel with PKU and autism, Arlo with um, 
multiple surgeries after being uh, run over by a vehicle last year. Tano with spina bifida, Brantley and Elsie with heart issues, Tucker, Lorelei, and Jenna are battling childhood cancer. We continue praying for preemie twins, Navy and Milo, baby Dallas, baby G, uh, Gus's grandson, and Abby. Also for Darla's granddaughter, uh, who's um, been dealing with seizures, Tammy Lawson's granddaughter, Emily, with epilepsy, Tina Lisi with epilepsy. Uh, we're praying for several people with heart issues. Let's continue believing for each of them. Blaine, Kenny, Mike Sappington, Joyce Fisk, Sister Patty Arnold, Bud Taylor, Don and Betty Cossey, Jimmy Warren, Michelle Strain's mother, Amy Dees, with congestive heart failure at a very young age, Cheryl LaChance, Brother Mark Morris, and uh, Kelly B. And uh, I'm glad to report on Brother Mark Morris's behalf. I've noticed that he's been um, uh, conducting revival services in some area churches in our district. And so I'm thankful uh, to be able to see that he is feeling well enough to get out and uh, be able to preach the word. We're praying for those with stomach issues, uh, Amber Kay, Savannah, Olivia, Natalie, Aubrey, Heather, Michael, and Ginger. Uh, we need to pray for healing of lung and respiratory problems for Rebecca Rush, Kendra Ortiz, Gary Shepard, and Robbie Northrup. Um, we're praying for Edwin Lopez, who had a mass discovered recently on his lungs, and they are hoping that medications will clear this up. If not, he has to go to St. Louis for a scope. So we're praying that whatever this is, uh, that it is stopped in its tracks and that he will receive the healing that he needs today in Jesus' name. We're lifting up those with Parkinson's disease once again. Uh, Christian's friend Matt, Tim Workman, Joey Etheridge, Marsha's mother-in-law, Russ, my mother-in-law Beulah, uh, who also has supranuclear palsy and a C1 uh, fracture of her neck. Uh, my father, Ron Bryant, has been uh, battling with Parkinson's for several years. He needs a healing touch. Uh, Rose Brown, June Coffer, and Sister Judy's mother need healing of arthritis. We're praying for healing of mobility issues for Sammy, Sheila, Chris, and Renee. Healing of back problems needed for Gary, who was in a serious car accident. Um, he also needs salvation and has recently been diagnosed with cancer. We're praying for healing of the back for Terry Nelson, Lori Gravel, Michael Parrott, Malena, Carolyn Rogers, Becky Wilson, Bob O, Rebecca Williams, Cindy Page, Britt Moore, Brianna Williams, and Sister Pam Pulliam's daughter, Jenny. Uh, those with diabetes include Cheryl LaChance, Jimmy Warren, Cindy and Lloyd Page, Brother Pulliam, Kristen's cousin Grady, Tim Workman, myself, Steve Cummins, Michael Williams, Anthony Williams, my aunt, Emily Stanley, Evie, Rose Brown, Becca and her mother, Christina, J.R. Johnson, Kristen's neighbor, Natalie, and uh, Christian Carr and Titus Dornbach, both with juvenile diabetes. We're believing for healing of migraine headaches for Malena, for Beth Wheatley, for Marsha Moore, for Marsha's co-worker son. We're believing for healing of MS for Sarah Stroop, uh, Marty DeLott, Riley March, and Tracy. Uh, healing of dementia for Vivian, uh, Johnny's mom, uh, Kristen's friend's dad, and as I mentioned earlier, Melinda Cummins' mother. In our other health needs today, let's remember Robert Holding needing a healing touch of his nerves. Uh, Carrie's husband, Chris, with blood pressure issues. Mike and Tony Hodge, George Tibbs, Doug Seaball, uh, Mara Sullivan, Michelle Clark, Sarah Seaball, Regina Marlin, Bob and Shirley Perkins, Janet, Robin, Devin, Shirley Garner, and Sister Judy Williams' brother, all with health needs as well. Sharon Downing's on hospice care. We have many who are in nursing homes that need encouragement and strength and need compassionate and competent care. Let's pray for the staff at these facilities that they would be uplifted as well. Uh, those with spiritual and family needs, we have several who battle addiction each and every day of their lives. Let's pray for Josh, Alan, Ashley, Dawson, Charles, William, and Frank. Let's lift up Annette and Dave. 
for God's continued touch upon their home, upon their marriage. The Clark family has many issues they need prayer for. Grace's best friend's family, we're believing for wholeness and peace in their relationships. Pray for Marcia and Britt and their family, uh, and especially their son Josh uh, and their granddaughter Addie. Uh, let's lift up Cheryl's family and friends, that they would return to the Lord. Jean, Lexi, Judy's grandson, uh, this is Judy Johnson's grandson, Beulah Ziegler's granddaughter, the Boland family, and other uh, uh, new uh, families coming to our church, the O'Hara family. Uh, we need to pray for Stephen specific, specifically as he has some special needs that he has shared with me recently. Jenny Perkins' sister Lisa needs mental, emotional, and spiritual healing. We're praying for Jennifer and Brenda's family for revival there. Uh, those in the family that have never received truth and uh, and also prodigals in that family. J.R. Johnson, Judy's daughter Jennifer and her family, Pam Poivas' family, Dana Vasquez, Debbie Biddick's family, the Sappingtons, Mark and Caitlin, Matt and Michaela. This is uh, Brother Mark Perkins' uh, sons and their wives. Let's remember them and their families. And remember Brother Mark uh, as well as he is uh, traveling this week, um, driving the truck uh, and is in Texas, I believe, currently. Regina Marlin's family, our Mingo RCF residents, our Mingo Job Corps students, uh, all needing our prayers. And we're praying for Destiny to grow in her relationship with the Lord. Uh, let's remember our global missionaries, the Heishen family in Germany, the Tamias and Pattersons in Ukraine, the uh, Gray family, Bradley and Patricia Gray, who are associate missionaries to Botswana and are currently in the United States uh, doing deputational travel. Let's pray they will be able to raise their funds quickly uh, to get back to their field of labor. Metro missionaries, Tim and Rachel Richmond in Detroit Metro, and Jerry and Ann West and their families. Uh, Brother and Sister West in D.C., let's remember the works there that they are planning and pray for God's continued blessing and for open doors for them. Ramiro Mercado is one of our North American missionaries in Missouri, or one of our newest uh, appointees. And he and his family are planning a Spanish-speaking church in the St. Louis metro area. Uh, so let's keep praying for them for continued growth and development of that church. And our North American missions focus for this month is Terry and Angela Etherton in St. Clair, Missouri. Um, let's pray for revival in their city and for God to strengthen them uh, for each and every day that they uh, will be able to do his will and um, and that their family would stay encouraged. Our military personnel need continued uplifting in prayer. Fort Campbell families under lots of strain and pressure and many of them uh, suffering from grief right now at the loss of, of uh, family members and deployments taking a a significant toll on all of them. Judy and Mike's grandson, Andrew, is stationed in Romania. Johnny's nephew, Mark, is stationed in Japan. And Grace's husband, Johnny, is currently doing basic training in Texas. Pastor Chuck Clark needs continued prayer for his job situation. Mike Hodge is needing to sell his home. And we're praying for Tony, Vera, and Lana, all with unspoken needs this morning. And I do believe I read the complete list that I had at the time uh, this morning. And I hope that uh, each of you, as you have needs being posted today, that the rest of us can take note of those needs as well uh, to take them to the Lord. Good morning to you, uh, Judy and Kristen, Carmen, Johnny, Marcia, Sherman, um, Sister Pam. And Brother Ben, thank God for each of you who are with us currently live and for others joining us along the way here this morning. Let's go to the word of the Lord uh, today. I'm going to be reading to you from 1 Kings uh, chapter 18, uh, reading verses 20 through 24. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel, 
And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut it in pieces, and lay it on wood, and put, it, put no fire under. And I will dress the other bullock, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. I noticed here that at this showdown between Elijah and the prophets of Baal, Elijah did not speak much to the false prophets. Instead, uh, he speaks to the fearful people that are gathered around. In that day, many of God's people had gone into apostasy. They were lukewarm at best, living compromised lives. And they saw the religious schools closed and religious leaders killed. So they decided to dilute their faith rather than risk their life and destroy their livelihood. So the people did not answer when uh, Elijah spoke to them and appealed to them uh, to return to God. They wanted to see who won the fight before they declared their allegiance. You see, they were living by sight. They were not living by faith. However, God graciously and patiently pursued them as he does us. And in this uh, scene that we see in the scripture this morning, we learn some important lessons. Uh, a couple of things I want to touch on this morning. First of all, our faith is to be public and not private. Uh, since God is Lord over our public and private lives, our worship of him and witness of him or for him must be both private and public. And there is power in our public witness. And God will back up that public witness if we will have the courage uh, to openly declare him. Secondly, uh, I notice that some people come to God through persuasion and others through power. Let me explain that. Uh, those who come to faith through persuasion, they typically have a lot of questions and objections that you have to answer along the way. Those who come to God through power typically see God show up and do some sort of supernatural miracle in their life that proves to them in a moment through experience that God is real. And those people that have that kind of experience, um, you don't really have to answer a lot of questions because that experience up front answers many of the questions and objections that they may have had in their mind. And in this particular moment of Elijah's ministry, the people needed to see God's power in order to believe. And in our generation today, we have many people, they're going to need to see a demonstration of the power of God in order to believe that he is uh, truly God. The Apostle Paul said, I didn't come to you with excellency of speech. I didn't come to you with enticing words of the wisdom of men, but I came to you in the power and the demonstration of the Spirit. Paul certainly had the ability uh, to argue and to debate and to uh, answer every question and objection because of of uh, his uh, study of the word brought up at the feet of Gamaliel. He understood the law, and because of his experience with God, he understood grace. But he understood what it took for him uh, to come uh, to salvation was, uh, although he had all the knowledge of the Old Testament, uh, it was that experience with God on the road to Damascus when he was literally struck down to the ground and blinded by the great light of God's presence and received subsequently the miracle of his sight being restored that the Apostle Paul said, the Lord, he is God. Or rather Saul, who became the Apostle Paul, confessed that the Lord, he is God. Like any battle, the terms are publicly stated so that the winner is obvious in the end. Elijah said, you call upon the name of your God 
and I will call upon the name of the Lord and the God who answers by fire, let him be God. And so Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and he gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel and Elijah came to the people and began to declare the word of God to them. And we see how all of this played out as God did answer by fire. And I believe today, if we will publicly declare him, that God is going to answer and going to prove himself powerful in people's lives. So many people need an experience with God. Let's, let's believe for that experience. Let's believe for miracle signs and wonders to begin to answer the questions that people have in their mind. And when they see that God is real, they'll cry out like the people who were unconvinced before the fire fell, and they will say, the Lord, he is God. Amen. Let's pray together today, believing for miracles to take place in people's lives and for their experience with God to change, to change them today and for a supernatural work to be done. Lord Jesus, we come to you in your mighty and matchless name. And we thank you, Lord, for every experience that we've had with you. We, we know what it's like to be full of doubt. We know what it's like to be almost unpersuadable by argument, but then to experience your power, your demonstration, and to know for ourselves that you are indeed the one and only God. Hallelujah. So many people are serving false gods today. They're serving the bottle. They're serving that injection in their veins today. They're serving those pills uh, that they're taking. They're serving uh, the God of sports. They're serving uh, so many things that uh, they're trying to fill the void in their hearts with, but only you can fill that void. We cannot persuade them perhaps by argument today, but Lord, we can uh, see them persuaded as you begin to answer by fire in their lives. Let your fire fall today. Do your work today, God, in each of these. We've called all of these names before you today. And God, now we ask you, Lord, to reach down and begin to do the work. Let your right hand of power begin to come forth. We know you're already working on the left hand, but we believe today you're going to work in the right hand of power. In the name of Jesus, Lord, intervene today for those who are battling affliction in their body, that they would recover fully. Those who are dealing with cancers right now. We speak against those cancers in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the name above every name, the name that all power in heaven and earth is invested in today. And we declare your power in the name of Jesus. We believe for Kristen's dad, Lord, to heal swiftly from his procedure. We believe for Anthony's ENT appointment today to go well, to go better than expected. We believe for report of a miracle for him today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We pray, God, for Darla and Virginia going through chemo today, for those with liver problems, for these children that we've mentioned today. God, you care about the children. You said to permit the children to come to you. And Lord, today we bring them to you. And we ask you, God, just to take them in your arms and let your healing virtue begin to flow into them. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God, for healing for each one that's battling with heart disease and heart irregularities, those with stomach issues and lung problems. We pray, God, for those with Parkinson's disease, those with arthritis and back problems and mobility issues. You are well able, God, hallelujah, to heal them completely right now. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, for healing of diabetes healing of migraine headaches, healing of illness and dementia. You are the mighty God. You are on the throne today. Hallelujah. You are the God that answers by fire. You're the God that answers by supernatural means. We know that you've given ability to the doctors. You've given them knowledge. You've given the surgeons ability. But God, your ability far surpasses what they are able to do. And you are still able to heal completely of your own power without any intervention of man. You're able to do surgery without a scalpel. Hallelujah. Without a scar today. And we believe for your touch. 
your touch today upon those of, uh, of every kind of health need, those on hospice care, those who are in nursing homes today. We believe, God, for them. We believe, God, for you to move in other kinds of situations today. We pray for Mike Hodge that he would be able to sell his home. We pray for Pastor Chuck Clark's job situation. You have the exact uh, uh, job that he needs right now to support his family, a job that will complement and open doors even for his ministry. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God, that you would move in the spiritual and family needs that we've mentioned this morning. Every family, Lord, that's looking toward the church, every family that's made a start for you, God, we pray that every obstacle of the enemy would be removed out of the way. We pray against every hindrance. We pray, God, against any double-mindedness that would try to creep in and any doubt that would invade their heart. We pray, God, that you would move by your power in their lives, that you would pour out your spirit upon them, that they would be baptized in your name, in the name of Jesus. Have your way right now. God, move in the hearts of the prodigals. Move, Lord, for those who are battling mental illness today, those who are struggling, Lord, emotionally. God, we pray for your healing for them, those that are battling addictions. In the name of Jesus, we believe for them right now. Hallelujah. Open doors for our missionaries, our global missionaries, our North North American missionaries in every city, God. Encourage them as they do your work. Bless them financially, God. I know uh, from being from that background myself, I know uh, the burden that they carry financially. I know, God, that they feel like that it's, it's totally up to them and it's upon them to be able to carry it, God. But you are able to carry them today. You are able, God, to bless them. Open up the windows of heaven today, God, and pour out your blessing upon the Etherton family, the Mercado family, the Hyshans, the Richmonds, the West, the Gray family, the Tomyevs, the Pattersons. In the name of Jesus, let your perfect will be done, Lord, for them today. Hallelujah. We pray for our military families and for those that have been mentioned from these various families in our prayer team that are in the military serving our nation. Protect them today. Keep your hand upon them. Move in the unspoken needs this morning as well, Lord. You see Lana Lane. You know her needs today, God. You see Tony and Vera and the discouragement they battle, the pressure that they're under. They need a miracle today, God, and we believe for them. We believe for them right now. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, you are able to do anything you are able to do anything, and we give you the praise and the glory this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We honor you. We worship you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask all these things, and we celebrate your answers today in advance. Amen and amen. God bless you this morning. I see some new things being posted here, some praise reports coming in. I'll make sure to share those with the entire team first thing tomorrow morning, and I'll go back and look at any requests you might be posting as we've been praying. Let's join together again tomorrow morning for another great time of uh, praise and worship, prayer, and study of the Word of God, and uh, let's just continue to believe for God's power to be demonstrated in people's lives that they can be changed by Him. I'll see you tomorrow morning, and I'll see you at 7.30 a.m.